All right, hello everybody. I got a lot of requests um, to do a kind of a rig rundown and show what I do with everything. So hopefully this will work. Um, people said I had some scratchiness last time in one of the sides of this. Hopefully I'm getting this right. Turn down the, uh, you don't need reverb. So just to kind of show you, first off, I'm using a, this is a Road Cases USA 32 by 16. Um, if you can see them on here, I have these little rubber feet. Um, and basically, those kind of keep the board from moving. Uh, some people had said, oh, you don't have problems with that, but I did. So I, I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them on there. Um, they're cheap. Got them on Amazon. I had one rip off. I just screwed it back in. It really wasn't that big of a deal. Sometimes that happens. Um, over here, you can see the little bolts from where my uh, microphone stand is. That's what holds it. So I'll flip it over and kind of show you the rest of it here. The microphone stand right there is a railing flange, and I use an Allen wrench. It's kind of a bigger one, maybe like a, a six or an eight millimeter or something like that railing flange, and uh, or uh, Allen wrench. And so I have to get in there. Sometimes I have to actually unplug the helix in order to get in and tighten it. Um, you can use a tom mount, the tom mounts that mount on top of a bass drum. That works really well um, from what I've seen, and you can just do that with your hand. So it's very important where you place everything. So one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about was how I place, you know, with all the inputs and outputs. The XLRs are right here. These are my two XLRs. I have a dry side and a wet side. I could always just run the dry side somewhere if I need to go in mono, and it'd be fine. Um, if I turn off the Mimic, I don't have to worry about stereo anyway. All my sends are here. And you can see I don't have the, they're not really long. These are just the new, the newer style um, Planet Waves quarter inch jacks from their, I think it's a, they have a pedal building kit and they also have just a cable building kit. So I had one of each and I use those. Um, their newer ones are work great and it looks like they have a new a new line for this year as well. But um, those work great. They're kind of low profile, give me enough room. I can still get my XLRs in and have the, um, the uh, power strip. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is how I mount this to the bottom of the, um, of the board. And let me find some stuff here. So I use dual lock. And if you can see here, I've taken the dual lock and I put them together. And when you do this, you can snap them together. And listen to this. You can hear it snap together, and that gives you extra height. So you might have you might have like a flat surface. Look how much height that is. Like my whole, that's at the height of my finger. So you've got that much room to put cables and things. And I, that's how I you, um, get mine to the helix to lock on. It doesn't fall off. I also put um, padding. I just went to like a hobby store and I got some padding. You can go get special gun padding probably at a gun store. But I've heard when I went there, they said, we get asked for that a lot, but we don't have it. That's a, the, you know, I just went to like, you know, Hobby Lobby type place can't think of the name of it but anyway I took all the rug off of the bottom it was pretty useless even with velcro and the velcro they give you there's this huge thing of velcro enough to cover it probably three times um it just it sucks and the the the, the carpeting that was on there it didn't stick very well even the rubber stuff that's underneath doesn't always stick to the wood if I had if I really had the time I would probably take all this rubber stuff off and just paint it black, but you can see the wood underneath there. Um, the rubber doesn't bother me too much. You can see, see some of the junk underneath there from the glue from where the rug was stuck. So anyway, not that big of a deal. So 
underneath my Line 6 G10, which has worked great for me. A lot of people ask questions about that, but it works great. Underneath that is a digital um, power supply Voodoo Labs. So it only has four, but that's all I need. I'm powering the drop, which does take quite a bit. I think it's at least 300 milliamps. The Eventide, which is more, but you can run out of like a, I think you can run at 12 milliamps. And I also think that the center, it's whatever the opposite is of the other ones. It's center negative, center positive, I can't remember, but it's like the opposite of the other ones. Why they do that, I don't know. But the, the, the power supply comes with that, so I can power all three of those, which used to be warts, or would have been you know warts that go into the, the power strip, now are just one power supply. The other thing that I also power is this bright switch. The bright switch also has a USB output to like charge your phone or whatever. Well, that works perfectly for the G10. So I have this coily cable and it has a, this is a right angle USB and I have a right angle uh, port that goes into the back of the G10. So that works excellent. Um, it's out of the way. So when I go to close up, um, you know, close this up, every, nothing's in the way. So all I have to do is take out the, the G10 power thing and I take out the bright switch and I, the, the actual, you know, this thing. And I um, <clears throat> take those off. I can, t you know, unplug my XLRs or whatever, put everything in there. I close it up and good to go. This is very heavy. So I got to say, I had a 5150 50 watt and a matching 212. And um, this is heavier than either one of those. It's the heaviest thing I have. Um, so I would get the one, there's one that comes with wheels on one side so that you're kind of, you can carry, you can lift it up and you can kind of drag and carry it. Um, that's another good way to do it. So um, without lifting up my helix, just want you to know, I only have like maybe five or six little swatches of that dual lock. Dual lock is the way to go instead of Velcro. Plus, because you can do that, because you can do those layers and they snap. Um, it's also very strong. So as I move, you'll see, you know, you can put your weight on there. Now I might pop off the other side if I put my weight really down, you know, strong on there, but it pops right back in with that dual lock. It works great. And I have room to stick the power cable. So you don't see the power cable to the, uh, the uh, power supply or to the helix. They're underneath the board. So they're kind of just rolled up underneath there, um, which is a good way to go. Um, a lot of people ask me, how do I have the Mimic set up? Well, if you were running stereo into the Mimic and then out, there's a mono input and a stereo input and a mono output and a stereo output. So if you're only using the, they call it, they say the doubling amount is one, two, and three, meaning the doubler is one, two, or three. Um, with only one doubler, which is what I use, if I'm running through the stereo side, you get only, that's 100% of the effect side. There's no reason to go through the mono side. So I just run one loop on the mono side and in my patch, that side has its own path to B or whatever path. And that's done all the way to the right hand side. So my unaffected dry signal is on the left and the mimic effect only signal is on the far right. If I don't feel like running in stereo for some reason, I can just turn off the mimic, no big deal. I can also just run the um, dry side of my XLR out. So that's how that works. How I'm recording this, it's another thing I get asked. Um, drop is also now, just before I go, go on too much further, drop is also in a loop. I used to run it right in front. Just, I don't know, just figured I could. So I put it in a loop. Um, I only have one patch, one or two patches set up with that drop in there. And what I did was I took out, you know, the input block of the helix or at the very beginning of your patch, you can set up a uh, noise gate in there. So when I run the drop, I take turn that off and I put a noise gate after the drop because there's a little bit extra noise anytime you're running a loop in front of an amp. The ones after the amp is usually a little bit better. The Eventide is running stereo into loops three and four. Um, I haven't really found a thing to use the 
the H94. It's great. It's got a lot of cool stuff. It's fun, but it's more of a toy than any than a useful uh, than a useful thing, you know. So far, um, some people also commented on, you know, oh, the wah pedal and or why do you use the mission instead of this? Oh, you can change that. No, you can't change the motion. Okay, this has this feel. There's you move. You have to move very much forward. So if you're doing like a whammy where we have to go really fast from heel to toe, you have to really, really move your foot a lot. With this one, it's much smaller. Like I would say, you know, sixty or seventy percent as much movement. So you can get from heel to toe faster. Whether you move in the wall or whatever, and it fe it just has a different expression to it. So for volume, I like this. I also use this for some delay effects. I'll use the expression pedal that's built in, but I just cannot use it for a while. Um, one thing that I did on the, the pod that you can't do with the Helix, or at least in the, any of the new versions I haven't experimented, but with the first versions, was I actually put something underneath the bottom of it so that you could not go all the way heel down, and I made that my zero percent i kind of calibrated the pedal so that was zero and that way when you were heel you weren't all of the way heel back and i could control that a lot better so anyway um i think i covered everything um one thing too about the bright switch i don't never thought i would really use that light but we end up using it a lot because i i end up putting it right over whatever the set list is, it's a lot easier to see on dark stages. Um, one of the things that I found as well is, you know, I like a dark fretboard is actually easier to see the side dots on, and now I put lumen lays in my um, dark fretboard. So I have an ebony fretboard on my, you know, I've got a Wolfgang Stell, and I've used lumen lays. Um, I just drilled the, the holes, put in the lumen lays myself with some super glue, sanded them down. Um, and man, it, so much easier. And using maple necks on those dark stages, I just can't see it. My eyes are not as good. But anyway, all right, so let's go here. I have a mic, use a mic stand now. All right, so on our mixing board, I have my guitar has its own two channels and they're split left and right. So you can see guitar there. And that's where my wet and dry or dry is left, wet is right, are going in. And then I control all this. So a lot of people ask, well, what about the sound man, blah, blah, I am the sound man. So screw everybody else. I'm the only person that's stereo. I used to run the run the um, singer stereo. We've got an effects thing for him, and, you know, didn't really make a difference. So um, if you go down here, you'll see there's me, my drummer, and singer, our bass player. Then I've got kick and the toms, the guitar, and then these other ones. So uh, the, just a music one and another one. These are all stereo paths, these last four. Um, you could run stereo into here. Like I could just run two quarter inch jacks and run stereo. The problem is when I'm using it to monitor myself, um, you're gonna get like a doubling effect because of those two stereo things are gonna be brought together and summed to mono. And, and when you do that, you're, it's gonna sound weird. So. That's why I have to run myself on two separate channels. And then you'll see here, this is the, these are our monitors. So my right side or my wet side, I don't have any of that going through the monitors. I mean, going through the mains and everything fine, but not through the monitors. So um, we all, we're only hearing dry on stage. Now, if I want to run an extra, mo I can run an extra monitor. Like if I ran it through aux, aux four, and then I could run that just for me, so I can hear my left and right and the two monitors that I have. So you have to think about how that path works. Um, and then to just show you how I'm recording this, I'm using a, a Zoom Q2N, and I'm using the um, aux outs, the, the RCA jacks that are you know going out, and just right into the side of this camera. Um, I think that it sounds pretty damn good for what it is, um, and. Uh, you know, it gets the job done. So hopefully this was a, a nice short rundown of how I kind of do everything I do. And you got to see kind of the secrets of my board. It's not, I don't think it's that special, but I'm always changing it to ever evolving. Um, oh, one other thing I didn't mention is I got a MIDI splitter. So I'm running MIDI out of the Helix. 
Then I'm splitting MIDI, going to the H9, and the other one goes also into this rack. So you see the rack in, down in there. I don't know if you can see it, if it's on, but that is a TC Helicon Voice Live 2. And so, like, there's the cable. I can run MIDI into that, and I can change those channels for the vocals so that we can do super, you know, certain vocal effects um, during songs if we need, you know, beginning a crazy train, the uh, all aboard with all the delays, that kind of stuff. So hopefully that's enough. Um, I'll run through some more patches in another video. And you can uh, check that out. So hopefully this helps everybody. I am Josh Hollis. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, whatever. Feel free to ask me questions. I answer everything. If you post it below my video, I will answer it. If I haven't, it's probably because something screwed up in YouTube. So um, thank you very much. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.